always believed we would see each other again. That our days of separation would finally end. And all my troubles would be behind me. One was furious upon receiving your letter. Seized with anger, one set out to bring you to your senses. In truth, one had more than a few misgivings about your chosen partner. As an exorcist, his talent was lacking. One could hardly say his skill with sigils was any better. But soon, one came to appreciate the devotion he bestowed upon you during your illness. He never uttered a complaint and rarely left your side. Unwilling to begrudge someone of such character, one decided to overlook his aforementioned deficiencies. Glaring though they may have been, wishing to grant you a life without regrets, one gathered many divine ingredients and used one's own blood to create a form of medicine. Though imperfect, it managed to suppress the more dire effects of your illness. As for how to deliver the medicine, after much contemplation, one eventually decided to perform the deed oneself. One took great care to alter one's features, and select the appropriate attire. Only after meticulous scrutiny did one finally set out for Wang Shu Inn. As one expected, you were most ignorant of one's true identity. You showed not even the slightest inkling of recognition. <sighs> one was quite torn. Should one have celebrated the success of one's disguise, or mourn the loss of your acquaintance. <laughs> Nevertheless, one would speak to you about another matter, if you are amenable, even considering your loss of memory. One was simply flabbergasted that you could so easily forget the consequences of consuming medicine infused with adeptal blood. Its proclivity to attract monsters is hardly that complicated of a concept to remember. To think that you tried to travel while weak from sickness and heavy with child. Had one not intervened to clear the fog, all of you would have been lost in the night. Those monsters would hardly have pursued you with such ferocity without sufficient incentive. They were likely incited by the presence of godly remains. <sighs> Said godly remains, in turn, were likely drawn to the trace of one scent on your body. One was, after all, an active participant in the Archon War. Some of the gods were likely shattered by contraptions of one's very making. In the end, one was relieved to see you endure through the night. At the break of dawn, one heard an infant's cry pierce through the air, and one saw you carefully cradle the child to your chest. Although certain mortal matters remain foreign to me, one could not help but be moved by your joy. To see you happy, 
That was more than enough. Skyward! Scatter! Now you should have a complete understanding of the events. Wait! But if that's true, then the crane who took care of me when I was sick must also be... Ah! One had almost neglected to recount the absurdities of that tale. Just as you and I troubled one with her antics, so did you give one many a headache. Upon finding you burning with fever, one made plans to bring you back to one's abode for treatment. However, upon seeing one's form, you began to cry, refusing to get on one's back. When one asked you why, <laughs> apparently you believed that one could not possibly be a true Adeptus, because all illuminated cranes are white from tip to toe. One had no choice but to apply powder to one's body to conceal the variegated nature of one's appearance. You became more than amenable enough when one stood before you devoid of any other coloring. It bears mentioning, however, that as a crane, you and I was nearly entirely pure white in color. Though you had never encountered her in that form, you still recognize the essence of her being. Perhaps fate brought you two together in more ways than one. Now all has been revealed. <sighs> one owes you an apology, you and I. One recognized you upon your very entrance into Wan Mean Restaurant. One has always viewed you as a disciple of equal standing with Ganyu and Shenhe. Indeed, one wished to bring your story to a satisfactory end with this visit to Liyue Harbor. Still, one could not reveal your identity right away. Had one simply informed you of all you had lost, all those cherished memories would merely have become the fictionalized account of another. Memories are most meaningful when recalled by those who live through them. Would you not agree? Even if the process was painful and arduous to experience. <sighs> have you any further inquiries? Master, I... I must ask. If you found me all those years ago, why did you leave me be, even though you knew about my mistake? Why did you not bring me back to Mount Outsong by force? One has never regarded your action as a mistake. It was a simple choice, nothing more. When it is time for one's progeny to leave the nest, it is the responsibility of an elder to let them fly free. Yet, when your wings grow weary, and the night grows dark, just know that you always have a place to which to return. Tis a refuge referred to by many a name in mortal writing. Home, nest, haven. Whatever its denomination may be, its essence remains quite unchanged. Hmm. One speaks, of course, of a place not unlike one's own abode. One's disciples are free to come and go as they wish, yet the door remains forever open to those who wish to return. One rather hopes you count yourself among them. Thank you. I just... Thank you so much. You and I. One expects you too have sensed the rapid deterioration of your condition as of late. Have you not? Forty years ago, you chose a path without a future. Though one used one's own blood to provide you with a few decades of extra time, it merely delayed the inevitable. One may have extended the path, 
yet one was unable to alter its final destination. <sighs> Even the power of an Adeptus has its limits. Had your condition continued to deteriorate, you would have forgotten your life as a human entirely. In the end, you would have turned into a creature lacking in the ability to even comprehend its own monstrousness. Fortunately, you were able to avoid that scenario by reclaiming your memories. Though one sped the process along by providing some guidance, the result is entirely a reflection of your own effort. So, what's gonna happen to Granny? One will help her reclaim her original form as a wild crane. If it be fated, she may recover her sentience one day. She's gotta go back to being a regular crane, huh? Master, you've already done more than enough for me. I don't know how I could possibly repay your kindness. This is a better result than I could have ever hoped for. How much time do I have left? <sighs> hmm. Not long. The transformation is imminent. And Granny, please don't leave, okay? You're all I have left. Please. Don't be sad, dear child. Granny has led a wonderful life. My only regret is having to leave you behind. Don't forget to eat well, okay? A growing young lady like yourself needs lots of good food to grow big and strong. Promise Granny you'll take good care of yourself when I'm gone. I promise, Granny. I'll do whatever you say. Good girl. Good girl. Don't worry. It's not goodbye forever. Granny's going to become the most formidable crane in all of Mount Outsung. Granny will train day and night. I won't stop until I can turn into a human without having to rely on anything but my own power. When that day comes, we'll be able to live together again. You and I. How's that sound? Good. That's a good girl. Even though we won't see each other for a little while, as long as we both work hard, we're sure to meet again someday. Uh, I'll eat well, Granny. I promise. And I'll wait for you, no matter how long it takes. I'll wait for you to come back. That's a good girl. Then Granny really has no more regrets. I'm so sorry, Master. Thank you. For everything. Let her be. At her age, crying is a natural, if not fitting, response to such an event. Tears are a necessary part of maturation. Sometimes there is scarcely a better vehicle to wash away the toll of stress and misery. Now that the issue has been resolved, you should also take a moment to relax. Give yourself some time to rest. Take a nap if you must. One will wake you in due time.
believed we would see each other again. That our days of separation would finally end. And all my troubles would be behind me. Stay this way forever. <laughs> A nightmare? Curious. If you relaxed, shouldn't your dreams be pleasant? It was a good dream. It's just. You weren't ready to wake up. <sighs> Eloquent as one may be, words of comfort are not one's strong suit. You are doing all you can. One can see your strength of will, your fearlessness in the face of danger. And so, whatever your dream may be, one believes that you shall achieve it. Of course, whenever the perils you face overwhelm you, or you become weary, one is always here for you. After all, as an elder, it is only right to look out for the young ones. Chicken drumsticks, that's all. M Madam Adeptus? Oh, shoo you, you're awake. How do you feel? I... I feel... a little better. Thanks. I know I'll see Granny again someday, so I don't feel so sad anymore. M Madam Adeptus? Could I, uh, ask you something? Would you... take me in as a disciple? Oh. And have you reasons for this sudden interest? I know Granny thought what she did back then was wrong. She felt really bad about it. But... without that mistake, I would have never been born. Even though Granny lost her memories, she never forgot to show me how much she loved me. So... I thought maybe one day, I could become a cool adeptus like you, and help a whole bunch of people, just like Granny wanted to do. Upon some reflection, one supposes you are no mere mortal. The fact that you undies blood flows through your veins is proof enough of that. If this is what you desire, one shall make it so. Thank you so much, Madam Adeptus! No, uh, I mean... Master. I... To you, are you sure about this? Paimon's gonna let you in on a little secret. We've seen Cloud Retainer's two other disciples, and they pretty much eat nothing but bitter herbs like Ching Chin and Violet Grass. If you join them, you'll never enjoy Wan Min Restaurant's delicious cooking ever again! <sighs> How utterly preposterous. One has never enforced such a rule. Every individual must find their own path to enlightenment. So long as one retains a pureness of spirit, one's dietary proclivities are quite irrelevant. Well, you say that, but Paimon's not seeing any tasty treats up here now, is she? Although Mount Outsong is rich in natural beauty, 
Its location does preclude access to certain finer mortal comforts. That is precisely why one plans to relocate to Liyue Harbor. Shu Yu shall have the honor of becoming one's first disciple in the human world. Whoa! You're leaving Mao outside? One has never concerned oneself with the location of one's residence. From the very beginning, one has sought only solace and peace. Yet in the end, all of one's disciples ended up in Liyue Harbor. Gan Yu, Shen He, Yuan Dai. They all chose a life among the mortal world. One has reflected on this fact for many years now. One can only assume that it is due to some failing on one's part as an elder or master. A failing, perhaps, of recognizing what it was they truly wanted. One is most curious as to what aspect of Liyue Harbor could have enticed them to remain there. Why are you all so silent? Paimon is... Uh, just a bit shocked, that's all. So, does this mean we can grab a meal together in Liyue Harbor sometime? Hmm. One has precious little time to squander. However, if one finds oneself otherwise unoccupied, one would not be opposed to the idea. One will be assuming the identity of a human while residing in Liyue Harbor. You should take care to avoid disclosing one's true identity. Don't worry, we'll help you keep it a secret. So, uh, when can we expect to start seeing you in the city? Perhaps in two days' time. One has some matters to see to before one's departure. Preparation is the key to success, after all. One plans to put up various items from one's collection for sale. The earnings should provide for a comfortable living in Liyue Harbor. One has already picked out a handsome property near Chihu Rock. Tis no small purchase, but what is mortal life if not one expense after another? Seems like you've really thought of everything. Then how about we meet up in Liyue Harbor in two days? A sensible plan. See you then. Oh, also, why don't you take this Suspense Insomnia mechanism as a souvenir? Anytime you should feel ill at ease in the future, you may try quieting your mind and sitting in meditation as you listen to its melodies. It might help you find a new perspective. Awesome! Thanks, Cloud Retainer! Hey, didn't we promise Shincho that we'd tell him what we found out? Should we make a trip to the Feiyun Commerce Guild? It's totally up to you. <sighs> Your concerns are excessive and unfounded. This is but a simple collection of ordinary valuables. Such intense scrutiny is hardly necessary. Uh, to be quite honest, your insistence on that fact is my primary cause for concern. In what way are any of these ordinary? Every single item here could be worth more than everything I own combined. I simply can't risk shelling out that kind of mora without proper scrutiny. If I'm wrong, I would never be able to earn it back, not even if I worked every single day for the rest of my life. I have to be careful. Yes, you can never be too careful. Miss Shenyun, what are you guys arguing about? Ah, perfect timing. This ignoramus is questioning the authenticity of my wares. I'll have you know, these items have remained untouched in my personal collection for several hundred years. To question their legitimacy is pure folly. Several... hundred years? It... indeed. <clears throat> They're family heirlooms, you see. Passed down over many generations, as families are wont to do. Yep, yep, they've definitely been around a while. We can vouch for her on that one. Hear that? Had I not found myself in need of Mora, I would scarcely have had the heart to part with them. Indeed, you should consider it an honor to even have the opportunity to behold them with your own eyes. <laughs> Doubt their authenticity any further, and I may just decide to take them to another buyer. 
Whoa, 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 please don't go. I apologize for any insult, miss. You see, I know full well that I lack the knowledge to judge the true worth of these items. If you could wait but a moment, I've hired an expert to appraise them for me. He should be here shortly. An expert, you say? Oh, very well. I will wait for a little while longer, then. Traveler, Paimon... This is my new residence. If you have cause to seek my company in the future, this is where you can find me. Master! Oh, it's you two again. Hello! Shoo you! You got a new outfit! It looks great on you! Mm-hmm. Master made it for me. I like it too. Huh? You know how to make clothes? <laughs> Do I know how to make clothes? With the support of the proper mechanism, sewing is hardly a challenge. Master, I brought in most of my stuff. There's a few boxes left, but they're kind of heavy, so... I just left them outside. Fret not. I shall help you move them into your room. Uh, actually, I, I should probably uh, sort through my stuff a bit first. Everything is kind of messy right now, so maybe you could um, not look yet, Master? Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> it appears my young apprentice has her own fair share of secrets. No matter. Do what you must, child. Now, this expert you mentioned. When can we expect their arrival? Soon, soon. Ah, there he is! Here, allow me to make some introductions. This is Mr. Zhang Li, a well-respected consultant at Wang Shang Funeral Parlor and an expert in all manner of valuables and antiques. Mr. Zhang Li, this is Miss Shen Yun. She's the one who's looking to sell the collection of valuables I mentioned earlier. Ah. Uh. Huh. Ah, if it isn't Miss Shen Yun. It has been quite some time since our last meeting. What a serendipitous reunion. <clears throat> In indeed, most serendipitous. Uh, have you been faring well as of late, Mr. Zhongli? Quite well, thank you. I was fortunate enough over the past few days to enjoy both a stroll in the mountains and a fresh brew of tea from the most recent harvest. The experiences left me with such insight and peace. Huh. Uh, so you two are already acquainted? Indeed. How fortunate we are that fate has brought us together again. If you are otherwise unaware, allow me to inform you that Miss Shenyun is a well-regarded collector and appraiser. She is well-versed in all fields, and off-celebrated for her impeccable taste. You stand to gain much from this opportunity. <laughs> You are too kind, Mr. Zhongli. True collectors pride themselves on their wealth of knowledge and eye for detail. I can say without a doubt that you are foremost in that regard. Why, you flatter me, Miss Shenyun. It would seem that you are as self-effacing as ever. <laughs> Not at all, Mr. Zhongli. Not at all. Um... While I am loath to butt into this conversation, I must ask, you two already knew each other, and you seem to have quite a cordial relationship. Can I be certain that you're not working together to swindle me? I mean, you never know! <laughs> huh! A preposterous accusation! The heavens themselves would collapse before we would conspire to do such a thing! Miss Shenyun speaks the truth. Contracts are built on honesty and trust. If that proves to be beyond your capabilities in this instance, this transaction may be taken elsewhere. Say no more. Let us depart. Uh, I jest, I jest! What fool would still harbor doubts after Mr. Zhongli himself has vouched for the goods? Miss Shenyun, Miss Shenyun, wait! Hmm. <laughs> <clears throat> I deeply apologize for doubting you. So, um, Mr. Zhongli, could you please give me a final verdict on the value of these items? There is no cause for concern. They are indeed rare and precious valuables. Take this mechanism, for instance. Though one may not immediately perceive its purpose, 
Its structure and appearance are exquisite enough to merit it a place in any fine home. The same can be said for this one here. Few could hope to possess an item that so perfectly blends mechanical wonder with geometric grace. I am sure you have heard from your travels that the study of mechanisms is among the most wondrous arts in this world. With that in mind, I earnestly recommend procuring every last item in this collection. All right. Since I hired you as my consultant, Mr. Zhongli, I shall, of course, trust your good opinion. Then, in that case, Miss Shenyun, I'll take the lot. However, since the final sum is quite large, how about we start with an initial deposit through the Northland Bank? The Northland Bank? Huh. Oh, you refer to the fiduciary house. Oh, very well. <laughs> I fear people only use the term bank nowadays. In that case, I'll be off for now. I'll return to collect the goods once you've received the funds. <sighs> Zhongli! My friends, have you been doing well? We've been great! How about you? Paimon didn't know you were such a busy consultant! My days have been quite pleasant as well. I had been quietly enjoying a cup of tea when Mr. Shaozu requested my services. As for you, Miss Shenyun, I presume you must be looking to settle in the city? I must say, the name Shenyun sounds exceedingly strange coming from you. Perhaps you could dispense of that particular epithet in further conversation. Whatever for. Am I not addressing you as a friend should? Well, that is true, but... <sighs> Alas, refer to me however you will. After all, a name exists such that others may address you with it. One is hardly ignorant of that fact. <laughs> it would seem that you have gained many valuable insights over the years, Cloud Retainer. One has indeed. One's previous stays were all brief. Now that one has made up one's mind to move and settle, one has gained a much better appreciation of the hubbub and commotion of the city, as well as the people's hard work and ardor. This city is much changed from how it was more than a thousand years ago. Not unlike the ocean tides, so too shall the movement of people ebb and flow. From turmoil to peace, enlightenment to aspiration, Human society possesses limitless potential. In another thousand years, the scene we witness here may change in ways that are impossible for either of us to imagine. All right, that's enough reflection for one day. No need to get all sentimental on us. You make a valid point, Paimon. Now that the sale has concluded, what say one plays the host as we try some specialty dishes together? One must profess great interest in trying bamboo shoot soup. Hmm. Perhaps you have forgotten, Cloud Retainer, but I once tried my hand at that dish. You were at the table on that occasion, so logic dictates that you should have already tried it. Oh? What occasion was this? It was a reunion between friends several centuries ago. Alas, you must have been too preoccupied to secure yourself a portion. Or perhaps our other companions simply availed themselves of faster reflexes on that occasion. Ha! Huh, hardly. Twas most certainly out of consideration for the others in attendance. In but a moment, one will show you what it means to have a true deafness of hand. It is settled then. Bamboo shoot soup, mora meat, crab roe tofu, triple layered consomme. We shall enjoy the lot. One has already passed word to Shenhun Ganyu to make a reservation. It is prime time for them to meet one's newest disciple. Is that agreeable to everyone? <laughs> it should be a most splendid occasion. Shu Yu, come now, it is time to dine. Ah, this gentleman over here is Mr. Zhang Li. He is, um... A humble employee of Wang Sheng Funeral Parlor. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Nice to meet you too, Mr. Zhang Li. 
That should be everyone, right? Let's go! Sounds good. Actually, Master, have you ever tried Adeptus's Temptation? I heard it's impossible to stop eating after even just one bite. You know, cause it's super tempting and stuff. Is that true? Hmm, that sounds rather implausible. Although with the right preparation, certain dishes can be too delicious to resist. Huh? Why are you all walking so fast? Hey, wait for Paimon! Hey, hey, wait up! Oh, the, 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 the,